Welcome everyone to Many Are Deceived. We give God the all the praise for his faithfulness, for his kindness, for his love over our life. I thank God for the life we live today. I thank God for having Jesus as Lord and personal Savior. And I also thank God for the Holy Spirit who leads us into obeying the word of God. Our God is so faithful. If you are here today, you are hearing my, the sound of my voice. I want you to accept Jesus as Lord. I want you to look upon everything that is going on in your life. You will see the faithfulness of God in everything that has to do with your life. Whatever it is going on around you, I want you to see that God is faithful. I also want to encourage you as you look about everything around you. You want to ask yourself, if I die today, where will my soul go to? Will my soul make heaven? Will my soul make hell? Will my soul be in a total place of torment? Some people keep talking and saying, Jesus, everybody will say, Jesus is coming, Jesus is coming. He's not coming. People said that. But my question is, if you die now, where will you be? We have place of torment in Hades. I will also have place of peace in Hades. So which side of the Hades do you think you are going to be? Is it in a place of total torment? Or in the place of Abraham's bosom, the place of peace? This is a question you will answer. This is a question that you alone know the answer to this question. So I welcome you today to our Many Are Deceived. Many Are Deceived, we all know the Lord grants me grace. See people, somebody that live here on earth, how they live their life. And in Hades, depending how they live here on earth, determines the place they will be in place in Hades, be it in the place of torment, be it in the place of peace, in Abraham's bosom. So in the place of comfort, peace. All the while the Lord has been leading me. He always lead me is the place those that said they are supposed to be serving the Lord. They didn't serve the Lord in truth and in spirit. They find themselves in a place of total torment. So in the part of the head is the Lord grants me grace to see is the part that is of torment. Because they didn't take their Christian life serious. And as many that didn't accept Jesus as Lord. They will find themselves in that place of total torment. So this is where I want us to understand the Lord grant me grace to see. And why am I getting all this? Because when the Lord started leading me, showing me all these things, I didn't understand. Because I have this feeling that anybody that says I'm a Christian, I'm a child of God, we make heaven. Because I, I take everybody to be the same. But as the Lord started granting me grace to see all the people's, in place of torment, in a place of total sh or, or total torment. I keep asking, but why must somebody go there in a place of pain like this, you see? So each time the Lord takes me out and show me, I will ask questions, the Lord will, I will not even get answer. He will just show me segment by segment, segment by segment. And that's where I came to understand when the Lord showed me, okay, when the person was alive, this is what the person was doing. And now, this is why, because of what this person was doing, this is like the repercussion of reward and where this person is supposed to be because of what he did here. It gives me a lot of questions. That's why many are deceived has always come like this. When I see somebody in pain, even when I pray, I keep asking, but why would this person go through this? You see, sometimes we must be very careful what... What what anybody sows is what that person will reap. You cannot sow banana and you get mango. You cannot sow off orange, you get grape. You see what I'm saying? Our Christian life, we don't take it careless. You see, that's why when I see some people careless with their Christian life, one leg in the wall, they can do anything they want out there, and they go back in there and I said they are children of God. There's a destination for everybody's work. Everybody will get their reward. So I welcome you again to Many Are Deceived. And sometimes somebody might say, do you always have to have a message? It's something that the Lord shows me. I, I cannot hide it. I just have to speak it out. 
And I pray for you today in the name of Jesus that the Lord will start ministering to you as well. I pray that you find his grace so that you'll be able to know where he's leading you. A lot of you must have been in the ministry. A lot of you are Christians, even if you are not a Christian. When you say you do not take Jesus as Lord, I want you to know hell is waiting. Because it's only through Jesus we can go to God the Father. There is no other door. Other doors are sinking ground. Other doors are for hirelings. Other doors are the doors that Satan has set up. It's only in Christ we come to God. It's only in Christ our names are written in the book of life. It's only in Christ we have freedom. It's only in Christ we are, we are not of darkness anymore. Because Jesus is the light that lighted everyone that is born here upon the earth. And it's only in Christ Jesus we can go to God the Father because in the past sin has taken us away from God. Sin has taken us away from reaching out, getting those things that the Lord has set out for us. But because without, without, without Christ we cannot get into what God has set out for us. We can't even draw close to God. Because the Bible said it so that sin is shall die, right? And we don't walk by sight. So when we draw close to God in Christ Jesus, accepting Jesus as Lord, Honestly, the Holy Spirit takes over. You are sealed with the Holy Spirit. Sealing with the Holy Spirit that you are marked that you are the child of God. Then the rest of your journey, you have to work out your salvation with fear and, and trembling. And whatever it is that was operating in the life of in your life, you start to denounce them. You see, that's another step people don't get very well. Some people feel that, oh, I'm a, I'm a born again Christian right now. I've accepted Jesus as Lord. Uh, uh, yes. All, all things have passed, the world things have become new. Yes, it is true. But they forget that there's things that was done in the past that needs to be denounced. This is where a lot of people have problems. Okay? So I welcome you again. This is Many Are Deceived. And this person, we are going to look at somebody that is so gluttonous, a follower. This person would like to associate with the wealthy. This person would like to associate with anything that is so fancy. This person likes like to associate with people that have... um. You say expensive homes, expensive cars, expensive this, expensive that, expensive just to associate with this group of people. That's what I saw in this person. And because of his desire, it really brought him into death. But the thing is, there are some errors in him, which we are going to look at today. And we also bring this today in our present life, brethren. Please, when you come to any... When we come to many are deceived like this, I want to use, I want to use it to encourage everyone. We learn from the errors of others, we learn from the mistake of others, and we pray that God will help us so that we will not be a, a failure. Because it's the Lord that is God that condemns a soul to hell. Human being cannot condemn you. So that's why we don't look at human being and thinking that human being will do a lot for us. No. The, the human being have the limits they can go. The, the human being have the limit because human being is not God. And that is why, you see, I was meditating, I was just meditating, thinking, when you, when you bring up a human like this, start praising the person. Start praising the person. The person cannot perform more than human being because he has a limit. So the praises that we are supposed to give to God, when we give it to a human, it might kill that man. It might kill that woman. He will keep that human because that person cannot act above his or her. This rather, he will start coming down. Because the way the person is going to treat this person that praises them is going to come down because that praise does not belong to human, it belongs to God. Does not mean that we don't honor, we will give honor to whom honor is due. We will do that. We appreciate people. I appreciate you. I honor you for who you are. So let us not mix it. That's why people operate on that cause because they give God's praises to human. And that's why the Bible says, Cause is upon anyone that puts his trust in man. So you see, we want to look at the word of God is very strong and powerful. So this person ha look into the area of people that have I want to associate with them. Don't know what they do for a living. I want to I want to welcome you again. This person was caught because he liked to be with the done and the wealthy in the society. One of those things, one of these things gets human either by kidnapping. It's one of one of those people that he got close to. He didn't know what they do for a living. They saw the, what he sees. He saw money, the way people display. They go to a place of drinking. They, the way this person spends money. What to just get you close to this person? But he didn't know. Even when he, came, he got to know, he didn't care. He said he can do ready to do anything for money. Let's move on, okay? 
because of time i will i'll be i'll be a little bit fast i saw people cage in a dark place when when this this started i saw people in a very in a dark place when i look well these people were like caged you know they were caged and there's no place for them to go they were just stuck somewhere and I just kept wondering, who are these people? So these are people that was kidnapped, kept in a place, like in a place they can, depending on what the people want. And I was also made to understand, this is a place where they keep people of ever, ever, any age, when they get people of any age, and these are the people that they use for, they, they sell them, for example, some they hope like ransom yes we got to the part for ransom but they have to hold these people cage them you see we see a lot of uh, 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 kidnappers we see a lot of people that hold people on ransom because they want to get something from their family members and loved ones so i was made to understand the friend to this person this guy went close to this was what they do and he was related or connected to the known you see a lot of uh, secret I will use the word these false prophets shrine worshippers they have connected this guy have connection with people that are known so this is his friend now i'm not talking of the, this guy in hades i'm talking about his friend okay somebody he came close to so this person have a lot of connection to these people that are that their names are sensitive in the society so he he does his job in a secret form and have his connections clean he has access to people that we get these people uh, that needs to be sent to the known for them to use them for whatever maybe organ donation sac human sacrificing bloodshed he was connected to people in the cult a lot people in the cult a lot because it look i'm not going to say i thank god that sometimes the lord won't tell me the country but i just want to use this to tell us that it happens everywhere pray in everything we do the protection of god goes with us in everything we do and i pray that protection continue to be with you and be with every one of your family in jesus name so in every part of the world i'm telling you there's a lot of this group of people okay you go to bars and when he, he saw this friend in the play in a bar and want to get close to this person because he know this person in the past okay so this is what that person does so after that i i saw him i just i was just taking back that this is where this person that we are talking about today was brought up right so i saw this guy in shorts and gray uh, not uh, like a cream color shirt that's a little bit dim he was talking and boasting and talking he's he, this is it uh, it was given to me to describe him he's a he's he's a boaster he talks too much these, these kind of people that don't hold their words don't bridle their tongue that's what i want to say they don't bridle their tongue they just keep talking they don't they don't know who is there they don't know when how to hold their tongue when to hold back and when not to speak they don't know how to filter words because of people around you see so this is this kind of person that's who he was when he was alive. So talking too much and talking too much without thinking is a dangerous thing, brethren. Whatever, in a, in a real life. So this is who this person was. This is what I saw. He was talking and before people. He was just talking, raising voice and going like that. So the, the Lord just showed me this person. This is areas of his weakness. He doesn't think. He just keep releasing word. Then after that, you know, I was made to understand that he came to know this person. And when he came to know this person, and I want to be like you, you know, I want to be like you, whatever business you do, I'm ready to do that. I believe that one was saying, can you handle it? Will you be able to handle it? He said, I can handle anything. I can do anything for money, okay? So I believe in the beginning, he, they started, right? They said, right? I think the, the person that he went to, I, I wasn't told much about this person, but all I, the part I saw this person that he went to was the dangerous part, what he did that led to this one's death, okay? So, this person kind of brushed him up a little bit with money, you know, brushed him up, looked clean, because remember the first time I saw him was in shorts, not really flashy like that. So now he's not brushed, he was, he was brushed up, because he was brushed up, 
he could see God into his head. And this person that was helping him told him, can you, can you be able to stand? But this person didn't really see him in the part of being mouthy. He talks, he talks without thinking. So there was a period whereby they came to know, he came to know that this person can talk. You know, he can talk. I think he was kind of cautioned, but I believe this person is somebody that does not absorb instruction. Then after that, he was taken out. I guess it's the agreement part. You know, there's a covenant part. So what I saw here was a casket, right? Um, yes, it's like a, a, a white casket. But at the end of beginning end of the casket, I saw something like food, like you have a chicken, food. You know, why would food be in a casket? This is where a covenant with food have to take place, because whoever breaks this will die. So let's just, when I said, I'm like, wow, Lord, how do I put this together? I will just got that explanation. So, seeing food in a casket, it stands for one thing. For you not to die, when you eat this, this is a covenant you have to make. Anyone that breaks this law goes down. He didn't get it. He didn't get it. Even in the time of this initiation, he didn't get it. So that is why it is dangerous. Whoever you associate with, whatever covenant you guys are putting together, be very careful. Don't go into any covenant that you are not sure of. We are going to go for that a little bit. So the person, I saw the person walking into the bank and, it, you know, are, are, are taking ransom from people, their family, loved ones who are kidnapped. This time was when I was taken out. It's like I went to the bank, right? Going to the bank, I saw a lady, a lady with a bag. You could see the face of this lady, there was no happiness. I said, what, what has this got to do with the bank? So, a family member held, and one has to go to the bank. This was what it is. I said, wow. The Bible says something, Proverbs sixteen thirty two says something. Better a patient person than a warrior. One with self-control than one who takes a city. Don't go because you think you have, have access to some certain things. You want to take them by force. It's better to be patient. So these people, he get involved with people that would always want to take hold of the city and grab from people so hard. This is what I saw here. And when I saw this lady that came to the bank, there was no joy in her face, but there was somebody behind her. I didn't get it the first time. So I didn't know that this was the ransom period. Family members were taken, you know. I don't know how I, I don't know how, what they tell them, but all I know is that if you don't bring this, this person will die. This was the business he got himself into. So at a point, I, I, there was something I saw. One struggling with people that held him, it was a big struggle. This one I saw this clear. So it let, it's like it's like a, a little fast forward that I wrote down, but this was the business they were doing. But mind you. They got the ransom, okay? Yeah. But the thing is that he became mouthy. Oh, my goodness. So the connections that he saw that this, this person had is going to jeopardize the people that, I, that get connection from them, that get business from them, that get people from them. So the fear that, oh, I've put the wrong person in the business is going to jeopardize the, uh, whatever they do, the names of people that are connected. The, when I say known in the society, I'm telling you, the Lord really gave me clear, gave me insight. None, even false court, false preachers that are caught on the platform, this guy was connected to them. So because he was this multi person, this money has come, he was very multi. It's like we are going to take this person out of the way. I saw this clear. When he, I saw the way they were dragging somebody, it was a big struggle. It was a big struggle because when they saw that he was going, he was, his mouth was going and they found out that this person has broken the agreement we have. This person is now mouthy. He's going to jeopardize our business. He's going to expose a lot of people that are connecting with us. And when he exposed, brethren, there's something we, we, we must understand. In the world we live in, there are forces, people that feel that they are the one. That takes hold of the city. Look at what I read in the book of Proverbs 16:32. He said, "Better a patient person than a warrior, one with self-control than one who takes a city." They feel that they can take the city. They feel that they are the ones in charge of the city. Every secret court, every secret thing that happens in the, in the society in the city, they are in charge for it. This guy got involved with these people. And without being smart, you see, we in Christ Jesus, the Lord protects his own. I'm telling you the truth. The Bible said something. 
And I love this portion of the scripture. He said, He that dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadows of the Almighty. The protection of God will be over us. And the Bible also said that a thousand shall fall at our left, ten thousand at our right, they shall not come near us. Only with our eyes shall we behold the destruction of the wicked. I want us to know that when Satan was casted down, there are angels that were casted out with him. So demonic forces increase in number. And these forces are in the face of the earth. And Satan always looks for a heart that is, that is ready for destruction, just like Judah's story, okay? So there are so many demonic forces in operation, but I'm telling you one thing. The, the way the Lord protects those that are in Christ, the grace of God shed his own. And that is one confidence we have that when we walk, we, both, we walk as bold as lion because his protection is over as many that put trust in him. So in this case, this guy was brought out for this mission, but the where he was being mouthy, they have to take him out. That was when I saw that huge struggle. The huge struggle, it was a huge struggle that, are you not my friend? What are you doing this to me? Because when I saw, when I saw that this, they were struggling, I saw this clear. And you, you know the worst part? I also saw demonic powers behind this group of people when they held this guy down. You know? And when they held him down, he couldn't, he couldn't, he couldn't move. The only person I saw among this group was like this one guy that the Lord kind of granted me grace to see, the one that is supposed to be the friend that brought him into the business. It's like now, nah, he betrayed the, the whatever agreement that they had, and he has to be, he has to go down for it. So I was shown an unripe mango. Shows that he did not wait patiently to persevere in the law for his time, but wanted to get all material things fast before the time. This was where the danger was. And as this danger was like this, the book of Psalm always told us, 37 Psalm said, Be still before the Lord and wait patiently for him. Do not fret when people succeed in their ways, when they carry out their wicked schemes. You see, we, you see, this portion of the scripture just is like a warning to. So those that are those of us that are living but this guy when he was alive i guess he didn't yield to this was he a christian yes and this is this type of people that say that believe in what prosperity preachers has given to them you see the dangers of these prosperity preachers has, is still lingering in the face of the air today many people heart has been so caged to the to the to the to the, to the fact that they have to get rich by all means to prove that they are christian that's why christianity being a child of god the abundance of what you have does not mean that you are born again child of god you see it's just people presenting superficial things it is bringing people to destructive lifestyle. It, the superficial things, they think that makes them a Christian. See, this is where the problem is. This prosperity preaching, a lot of them say they are repenting, but they are not fully repenting. You see, they have to go back and tell people all this, all this uh, sowing seed and using money to buy favor, using money to buy miracle, using money to buy anointing. Go tell them these are false teaching. Many people are going into, in the, into debt and a place of Hades because of this false prosperity teaching and prosperity, prosperity messages. This is an example of somebody that this prosperity message has influenced into getting into bad group, bad court, and not doing the detriment of what he got himself into. Because this mindset, I have to show off. To prove that I'm a child of God. You see, like I said in the beginning, he's a multi person. He's multi. He's the person that for you to look at me, you see, I'm a Christian. This is the mindset people have. So the this person had. So the, the, the concept of the fact that the abundance of what he has, making him a born again child of God, a Christian was was the satanic false doctrine that they imparted in him, what him and a lot of people have it today. And look at where this person is ending. He had to, even if he, he, he's somebody that don't take correction. He, this has already been planted in his head. He has to associate with the known. You have to see my superficial look to prove that I'm a, a child of God. That is a lie. The abundance of what somebody has does not make this person a true child of God. Does not make this person a Christian. And that is not the gospel of Jesus Christ. So brethren, you see in our society today, this prosperity preaching has really destroyed so many lives. This is example one of them. Okay, So he got involved with these people thinking that I can do anything for money to prove. And he sees that is the Lord giving him open door to get. Come on, man. This is not what God wants us to do. This is not. I don't see this as an open door. This is Satan. This, this is an open door Satan has given this person for destruction. And I want to bring this again a little bit to kind of uh, 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 update us. 
not all doors are doors the Lord open for us. There are doors that are not of God. There are doors that will open. It's not the actual door that the Lord has given for you. It might look smooth. It might look good. It might look beautiful. Please, not all doors are from, are from the Lord. Whatever somebody present to you, be it business, be it contract, be it job, you have to persevere. Pray over it. Let God go before you because you don't want to get yourself involved in something that will take your life. I know it is dangerous. I don't want to get yourself involved in something that would mess up your destiny because everyone that comes in the face of this earth that God has brought here, God has a will for you. God has plans for you. When you draw into him, you will come to be guided by the Spirit of God according to the Word of God in obedience. He will guide your path and he will direct you where you are going to be. But don't be that person that is always in a hurry. That always in a in, that always in a hurry, that always want to get it fast. Don't be that person, brethren. Don't be that person, okay? So at the point, at the at the at this point, I want us to look at this. So when I saw this struggle, he has already disappointed this group, and as he disappointed this group, this is what happens now. He will have to go for it because you know why? He opened his mouth. How the money came, he opened his mouth, how things are going for them, he opened his mouth, how he has gotten all this, he opened his mouth, how he know these people, how he know that person, boom, because his friend saw that this guy is going to expose what we do. That's how they grab it. It was the big struggle. I was shown now in the unripe mango, unripe fruit. People have to wait patiently. The Lord opens the door. That's what I said earlier. When the Lord opens, no man can close it. The Lord used that unripe mango to show me it's like a message for us. Every Christian, patience, trust God, persevere. Don't be too eager to join. Don't be too eager to follow. Don't be too eager to get involved in, in that thing that looks so good. Don't be too eager. Just be patient. God, the Lord will walk out patiently the way he's going to guide you. That's what I'm going to say here. Don't be in a hurry to get rich quick. Don't be in a hurry to get abundance of money quick. Don't go ripping people off. There's a huge cause and dead end there. Okay? So, I was thinking, he was very mouth in his first assignment to avoid the agent cause being exposed by his consistent boasting and showing off his achievement. Proverbs 26, 12 said, Do you see a man who is wise in his eyes, in his own eyes? There is more hope for a fool than him. You see, this is just an example. A man that is a man that is wise in his own eyes. You see, when this man that is wise in his own eyes. He said, there is more hope for this person than a fool that don't think, than a fool that always run into rush without waiting, than a fool that will just be going mouthy, talking and talking without thinking, that this person is trying to be the fool. But that wise man that will wait and see things with the eye of wisdom, have hope. So that's one encouragement I want to tell us. So they organize a soccer game in the community to get people they want used for their assignment to their customers. These are one of the areas that they, what they were doing because, because I was kind of asking, okay, more other ways. It not grant me grace. So the way they were getting people, I want to encourage everyone, wherever you go, you see, in these last days, I want to encourage you, please. Be careful where you go. I'm not saying you should live by fear. No, that's not what I mean. This group of people, what I got is that the way they grab people easily, depending on the age gap they want, they gather where, where there's a soccer game, you use like a soccer game and activities going on. This is where you see a lot of people missing. So this is how they kind of get some people, okay? Another one is that he got a mother. That's the one I've already told us. He got a mother and a, a mother and a child. This was the first time that he was able to get money, and that really exposed him because he couldn't hold himself when he got money. It, it depends on the business they did, but this is what I got, and it depends on the um, the the the. the Affluent, different influential people that they did this business for and determine the type of money. I want to, I, I want to, I want to say something here. There's a lot of secret covering among the influential, like we talk like the politicians and those people out there. You see, I don't want to call name. 
you see a lot of false preachers on the platform they have people that connect to get access i preach about tv joshua and i'll continue i'm not going to bring it down because all the people tv joshua got initiated put in the office of this their prophecy and all that there are things going underground that people don't know and the worst part is that it has really increased in the sense that they go wider and the way they go wider there are other things going on that is the when the, the lord grant me grace if you want me to call him i'll call him but i want to give a lot of us here insights there's a lot of when you see a true preacher of god you will know not an not a media entertainer not not a place that human beings are the foundations of the platform i've seen a lot of that when they preach you see themselves you see themselves you will not see heaven you will not see desire to live righteous you will not see you will not see the the desire the, the sacrifice of jesus taking place there you will not see somebody that is always humble but what you see i will just like Satan, you see. So I want us to be very careful. People go for miracle service. People go for, they give you one oil or anointing fabric or something. Be careful. These are the examples I'm giving. I'm telling you the truth. So I want everybody to be very careful where you go. So in this kind of case, there's a lot of connections. There's a lot of, to be honest with you, there's no way we paint it. There's a lot of blood shed out for them to come up there, to be able to, Chunk people's mouth, shut people's mouth so that people will not be able to rise. People will not be able to rise to bring them to the open. There are so many mysteries. Uh, the Lord grant me grace. I can open here. So for people not for to be for people to be hypnotized that even if they see something bad going on, they still zip their mouth. They'll just allow it to flow. There's force, and it has to do with all these blood sacrifices to chunk people, shut people's mouth. So you want to be careful where you go. So with the case of this young man, even though the first one they did was like kidnapping ransom, but he got access to other ones that it like he wowed him. That the pride of mouth, the pride came into him again. He started talking. Boom. That's why they say, you know what? We're going to get this guy down. That is where they got him and he was held down so much. Proverbs 30 10 said, Don't blow the whistle on your fellow workers behind their back. They will accuse you of being underhanded, and then you will be the guilty one. This is a this is a wise verse. This really break the just this really breaks the mission that brought this young man down. They had to do what? Eliminate him because he, he did not complete the covenant what they agreed, but rather he became the whistleblower. He, he talks without thinking. So this is where the whole thing came to the part where it led to his death. Okay? So in the part of Hades, you all know what happens in Hades. I want, I want to go back again. Don't be in a hurry for money. Whatever the Lord lay in your heart, persevere in it, trust and work hard, number two. Don't be that person that will just go and sit down and wait for money to fall from sky. No, you have to work hard. I'm telling you, when we pray for financial open doors and all that, you must hold something. If you do not hold something, how will you have open doors? When you are not working, earning income, the little, whatever it is, whatever you, it is that you have, when you are not working, definitely, where will the open door come? You, nobody will sit down and expect the money to fall down on his or her lap. It doesn't work like that. So you see, this is the false teaching of this prosperity preacher that have misled young youth like this. This was a young man. This was a young man, he said, was a Christian, yeah. But what teaching did he get? He got a prosperity preaching message. And it got into his head. Even when corrected, he didn't. He forgot that in the covenant he got into, he did not make wise he did not, he did not, uh, will I use the word? He didn't really think when he was making this covenant. Are you, can you handle it? Can you face it? And he can face anything. Boom, he got the covenant there because the friend brought him in. And he couldn't hold his mouth. He almost, he almost, he almost exposed names. That's when they plotted, you know what? Let us drag him. Because I told you when he, I saw people dragging this guy into a secret place. How did they, they know how they have to use him as well to solve some other problems, okay? So at this point, 
at this point i do encourage everyone in the name of jesus learn to trust god in everything you do when you trust god in everything you do he is so faithful he is so faithful he can never fail patience perseverance and another thing watch your mouth so let's go to the part of the hades the part of the hades where i know that when somebody dies is it in a place of torment or in a place of peace i you know i tell hearing this screaming this screaming was going on loud this screaming was going on loud and the screaming for deceived by satan and he was shot down with coal of fire you see when they get into the covenant he got in covenant with satan got into this covenant with satan promises were made but you know what he didn't maintain his own side of the uh, side of the game but at the same time all that the devil promises people that are in court there is no heaven for them the satan will promise that when they have their own kingdom i i believe god there's one of the messages the lord grant me grace to talk about the 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 court preacher the court person that satan deceived there's no a kingdom this is this is a place of torment this is your kingdom here okay so i saw i had screaming groaning like you know it's a gloomy place in this gloomy place it is not a place that anyone wants to go to that's why we're living here on earth serve the lord in truth and in spirit some people say what if i didn't wait when the trumpet comes this is hades that death will still come if he's dead to live is for Christ to also die for Christ. This guy did he serve the Lord in truth and in spirit? No. The confession he was given, he was given a false teaching of prosperity message. Did he got a chance for conviction? He should get a chance for conviction to hold on to Christ, not on the materialities. For example, why did he choose to go into stealing by uh, uh, you know uh, 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 kidnapping people? And he know that he, he was explained to what this life of, of people were useful and he agreed into it so he made up his mind what he wants and secondly he got into covenant he covenanted with satan and i want to I want, you all know some of you will know these people that are covenanted with satan their conscience is now saved below deep ground they, they don't have conscience you see the way they cut people be screaming and crying they see cutting the body parts just like um have you watched animal kingdom or something and uh, animals history you see and uh, like a tiger we get uh, uh, we get an uh, other like a monkey the monkey will be alive and this tiger will be eating this monkey alive these are the, these people they don't have conscience these are people human being be there they'll be slaughtering human being like a, like 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 an animal so he knew what he was in he got into what he wanted to he prepared his mind for it he said he wants to get rich by all means because prosperity preachers has really misled such people, youths like this. So when he came there, this screaming was so much. And before he realized it, a net, a net was kind of spread out over him. So he said, what does it mean? The way they allow people to fall into their net trap, that was how these creatures in Hades start spreading out this hot, cold, fire burning net when it goes down it sinks down into the skin down it's like shredding this person going through this person this person he screamed in head he screamed so bad this is step by step oh you like to grab people secretly okay let us grab you you know let us kidnap you it's like a net when you get an animal in a net you already got a fish net yeah so you know how to fish people for the celebrities for the nuns for the false preachers this is your time I saw the, the one of the net. The sword through his chest. You see, there are things in Haiti. There's something I'm getting, brethren. When somebody hurts somebody, okay, and this person, what that, what led to that person being there? That's what they are going to face. This guy got a sword piercing him through the chest. I saw this the sword through the through his chest because he hurts people. He caused them pain and the sword was going in. And as he was held, someone he was turned upside down and the sword was not going. You could see, you think this person is dying. The body fall apart, it come back together again. This is a horrible, this is a horrible torment. And in, a, in another one, you all know like the one of the sword. I, I, I saw another one like a, a shovel. 
with coin, with with coals of fire, because he talks, right? Yes, the Lord just reminded me that word. That he talks. The mouth that is always talking have coals of fire. They don't even care what people what people think. They open their mouth, just keep talking. There was shovel of coal of fire, boom, into the mouth. It's like tearing the mouth apart. The coal of fire poured in, and you could see it's like the head is going to blow out. It come back again. When he come back again, the pain and the screaming comes up. Then I saw the one for the coins of fire because it was after money. He was the one to get it by all means. Everything that he was after here, he has to experience them in Hades. See, brethren, this is one thing that really baffles me. Demonic creatures, the demonic creatures keep us in Hades. This is not hellfire yet. I'm telling you, this is not hellfire yet because they are already cursed. There's no, there's no life in this part of place. And you know, you all know, when Jesus died, he didn't come in this place of the torment. He went to the side of the Abraham. Read, read your Bible. In the book of uh, Matthew 27, if you read from 50 to 52, you see when Jesus resurrected. And the book of Psalm told us, 24, lift up your heads, all you gates, and be lifted up your everlasting doors, that the King of glory may come in. Jesus has to descend in hell. That's why when you confess Jesus as Lord, you believe in your heart that he died. He resurrected the third day because the book of Matthew 27 told us when Jesus resurrected. What did he say? He said he resurrected with saints and they were, they were seen in the face of the earth. Read your Bible, it's in there. So in that place of Abraham's bosom, whoever dies goes that place in peace, who is in Christ Jesus. But this other place of torment, no. Okay? So... This this is a torment that this person is going to like you all know when you you could hear groaning everywhere and screaming here, screaming there. But you know, when the Lord grant me grace is focused on one. I just want to use this to encourage us, brethren. Whatever way they live here on earth, access that led them to be disobedient to God, they will still be experiencing it in Hades. This is not hellfire yet. This is one. Of the things we really have to look into so our christian life we live in christ our name is written in the book of life for heaven live your life in christ jesus with fear and trembling in obedience for righteousness not into bondage to sin so bondage to sin leads people to this place of hades so in Christ Jesus, we live the life that is in Christ. It's a life of freedom. It's a life of peace. It's a life of joy. That makes the difference. The enemy knows those that are Christian. That's why I want to encourage you. Whatever temptation that you face, hold on to, the, to, hold on to him. Luke 16, 23 said, And in hell he lifted up his eyes, being in torment, and said, Abraham, afar off, and Lazarus in his bosom. So this is the difference. You see, it is separate parts. I, I was explaining to us. In this other part, Abraham bosom, the area when you are a child of God, you've given your life to Christ, you live on earth in Christ. Your name is in the book of life. If death come now, this person is, you are going to a place of peace. It was the, it, it, the, 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 the rich man that was living, didn't serve the Lord, didn't obey the word of God. He was the one in torment. So this is where, with example, I'm using to separate it. The Bible covers everything that you are hearing today. Acts of Apostles chapter 2, 27 said, Because thou will not leave my soul in hell, neither will thou suffer thy holy one to see corruption. Because uh, if, you look, if you look at King James, we call it, Hell. But if you look at like New International Version, you call it Hades. Because the Lord will not allow his own to see this corruption that is in what in, in the part of tormenting part of Hades in hell. It's a total place of torment. So this is where the difference. Who determines where our soul goes to is God. That's why he said, that's why he said the Lord will not allow his own to see corruption in hell. It's God that you you see. Whatever somebody does to you, don't be afraid of what anybody does to you. Don't be moved by it. But you know what to be afraid of? Him that condemns a soul in hell. It is God. It's the God that determines where a soul goes to. Because it's only in Christ that this soul gets the rightful place. It's only in Christ 
that will make heaven. It's only in Christ you can be in this place of peace if that should come now. Okay? So like we know in the book of Revelation 1, 18, he said, I am he that liveth. This is Jesus talking now. I am he that liveth and was dead. And behold, I am alive forevermore. Amen. I have the keys of hell and death. Oh my goodness. It's only in Christ that determines where your soul go to. It's when your name is written in the book of life first, you have to accept Jesus as Lord first. Whatever life somebody is living now, is it to the glory of God? Many are criticizing being a child of God. Many are complaining, cursing out Christians and ministers because of false preachers. But wait a minute. Do we always have the false preachers? I stand today, I am not a false preacher. If I'm telling you the truth, take this truth I'm giving you. And I stand in the truth. So when you people are criticizing, don't join to criticize. When people are, you know, deceiving people, you will check. How many have I listened to their message and prepared me for heaven? Find that person. That's a true preacher of God. Who you listen to that talk about what they can do for you? How they can give you something you pray through with something? That is not of God. I'm going to bring it openly now. Don't pray through image. That is not of God. So let us be honest. Jesus has the key of life and death. That's why when he died, the curtain of the temple that divided into two, which means that you and I could, can go to God the Father, both the same, Father in the name of Jesus, this is me. You don't need to go through anyone, through any any. Anything people say they go through this image, pray through that image. Don't you go to God the Father in the name of Jesus boldly? Because when you go to God boldly, what the Lord says is the blood of Jesus that was atoned for it. That's why he said, Jesus, He has the key of hell and death. Jesus has the key. It's in Him there's life. Anyone that don't have Christ don't have life. Let us be straight. The Bible said Jesus is the one that lighted everyone. This is the book of John. Jesus is the one that lighted everyone that is born here on earth. You have Jesus, you have life. You don't have Jesus, forget it. So what does people have today? Some people have false prosperity preachers. Some people have prophets. Some people have the miracle workers. They don't have Christ. You see, this is where you want to differentiate who is telling you the truth. Okay? So if we go down, Revelation 20, 13 and 14 said, And the sea gave up the dead which were in it. And death and hell delivered of the dead which were in them, and they were judged, every man according to his work. 14 says, and death and hell were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death, brethren. The day we come, those I've told you like people have seen in the Hades, in a place of torment. So when the day will come, this they will come up, everyone that didn't resurrect when the trumpet sounds. They will come up and give account. They are going to be judged to determine if they are going to hellfire. Anyone that didn't come up in the first resurrection will not make it. That is why you see those in the torment, they will not make it. When they trump person, they can't rise. So that is a clean one for us to understand. You say, and death and hell were cast into lake of fire. Where is it? Death and hell, Satan and his cohort will go into lake of fire. So encouraging you today, serving the Lord. Is the greatest thing you can do for yourself and do for anyone around you. Living for Christ. Even Job talk about something. Job talk about Job. I think Job 26. If you look at verse 5, he said, Dead things are formed from under the waters and the inhabitants thereof. The dead things that the enemy said. Anything that is not of God is not of God. Brethren, is under the waters and the inhabitants thereof. Okay? And in, for in death there is no remembrance of thee. In the grave who shall give thee thanks? Job is praying to God. Even if, if, if you allow him to, he said, God, if you allow me to die with this thing that I'm going through, we will give you thanks. So what are we bringing here? Whatever challenges you go through, don't hold it to be the end of your journey. No. In it, whatever we go through, we praise him. We all know the story of Job, what he went through. He still said, told God, God, even if I die now, we will praise you. So you have to deliver me from this. Did God visit him? God did visit him. He didn't, he didn't uh, um, say, I'm not going to serve you anymore. He did not say, Lord, you allow this to happen to me. I'm not going to serve you anymore. But he still praised God. He lost his wife. He lost his children. You know, even the wife said, oh, because of this, forget it. 
He even look at the wife, you talk like the foolish women. He, he won the wife. But what happened in the midst of what he was going through? He know the God is up. So we go through tests every day. Don't allow the challenges you have make you say words negatively. Because we are going to give account. So like in the young man we were talking about, he, he wanted to get the solution by all means. And he got into the wrong one. Many are so deceived, okay? Even Psalm 17, 15 said, As for me, I will, boldly die, I will behold thy face in righteousness. I shall be satisfied when I awake with thy likeness. In your life, in our life, we will be satisfied in the righteousness in Christ Jesus. Because we will wake up with what? With joy when that day comes. And if we go further, he said, what profit is there in my blood when I go down to the pit? Shall the dust praise thee? Shall it declare thy truth? This is one thing I love in the book. Of, that's Psalm 30. Psalm 30, David was just speaking to Psalm 30, verse 91. Verse 9. So, if I should go on and on and on, I'm just bringing this part for us to use it, to look at it, that even though whatever challenges we go through, please don't fail to praise God. This young man wanted to get rich by all means. But he didn't look at his weaknesses. Even though he wants to get rich, he says he's a Christian. He was misled by false preachers because he believed in the superficial prosperity preachers. He believed in the abundance of what is hard, the Tamil that he's a Christian, which is a false teaching that prosperity preachers that say they have jet plane, they have this and have that. They don't give people the raw word of God. They get from us and they use it to pompously preach out there. So, and you see some of this one sheepishly and foolishly just fall into this false teaching. And look at where he landed himself, trying to get rich fast, quick. And his head is in a place of torment. But God will redeem my soul from the power of the grave, for he shall receive me. That's the book of Psalm 49, 15. And when we look at this, because we in Christ Jesus, he will always redeem our soul. The soul of this person that is serving the Lord, you as a person that made up your mind to serve the Lord, you, this person that have accepted Jesus as Lord, I'm telling you, the Lord will redeem your soul. When that trumpet sounds, the Lord will redeem your soul. You go, when death comes now, in the place of peace, the soul goes there because this person has accepted Jesus. This soul accepting Jesus, this soul accepting light, this soul accepting life because it's only in Jesus we have life. So because he told us he has the power of life and death, he, the life is in Christ Jesus. So who does not have Jesus don't have life. This is just a simple way to break it down. If I say I have Jesus, I will obey him. I will live by his word, knowing fully well that my name, our names are written in the book of life. So if we should go back a little bit, what pushed this person into this? Quick to get rich. Wow. He has this belief that the abundance of what he has proves him to be a Christian. But mind you, he's a gluttonous, he was a gluttonous person. Want to get everything. He's a gluttonous follower. A gluttonous follower, whatever he get, I'll follow you. It doesn't matter how this person get the income. This is what led him to a place of total torment and darkness now. So I don't know where some of you worship, but I want to tell you, please do not fall to this prey of materialism. This deception of the abundance of what people have shows that they are Christians. It's a false teaching. It has led people to Hades, a place of total torment. It has destroyed lives. And these people, Jesus have clarified. They will say, I preach in your name. I perform miracles in your name. What will Jesus tell them? Depart from me, you workers of iniquity. They call the name of the Lord, but they are on their own. Please do not let the group of people that deceive this young man to deceive you. I encourage you in the name of Jesus, please remain in truth. Don't be moved by what you see. The Lord provides for his own. As the Lord provides your perseverance, your patience and trust in him. That's why, that's why the book of Proverbs 16, 32 said, Better a patient person than a warrior. One with self-control than one who takes a city. Okay? And some... Psalm 37, 7 said, Be still before the Lord and wait patiently for him. Do not fret when people succeed in their ways, when they carry out their 
wicked schemes. It's a warning for you and I. Don't be carried away by what you see. I don't know because of time. I would have just told you a little bit. The Lord grants me another grace. I, it's just another court. I don't want to call the name. Promising me this and it, brethren. I was not, I told I'm not interested in all these material things. So let us not be attached our mind to material things for what people, how people look at us, or we people thinking that people respect you because of your outward, what you have, your car, your home. No, no, no. This is the deception of Satan. And that is why a lot of people miss what the gospel of Jesus says. This is where these prosperity preachers have given people room for Satan to catch people tightly because they believe in what they have shows they are Christian. That's the false teaching. And this was what led this guy into doing anything for money. But he didn't see his weakness. He didn't see him being mouthy. He's so gluttonous and people follow up. So in my own case, they were promising so many material things. My mind is not even there. I'm not interested. What did they tell me? To consider another career. For them to bring me up in some certain career. Or if I don't want to change my career, that I should just preach only faith. Brother, you know only faith is not a message. I told them, I cannot change my Whatever you offer me, this is not the first, second, third, or fifth time I got this thing. So I'm just using it as an example. People that have easy open doors, not all doors, of God. So I see in this case, it's not all those okay, that are of God. As you trust God in your Christian life, stand in the truth. Whatever income you make, please let it be genuine. Be honest with your income and trust God with your income. Lastly, I'm going to say here, please brethren, a lot of confessors are people coming out to say, tighten is wrong. I warn you, don't let them deceive you. Please, as God has blessed you, the little you have, you and the Lord agree what you are going to tight for him. Okay? It is between you and God. Do not look on the people that are saying that tithing is false. Please, they are coming up again. Satan is, is a manipulative liar. Watch the message the Lord gave me. Watch that message, the last message the Lord gave me. Another spirit that I pour out, they painted as they are painting, they create it as a message, a flood where people will stand. Then it looks bright, but it's full of deception. And I saw the demon behind it. Please, brethren, stand in the truth. In your offering, in your titan, is between you and God. And the Lord leads you, is to his glory. Do not bring yourself into poverty. It's between you and God. Serving the Lord is not bondage. Serving the Lord is not for you to be in fear. Serving the Lord is not for you to be caged. That if I don't do this, I will die. That is wrong. You see, this is the false deception a lot of people bring on people. And people go to do anything to please their mamas and their papas to show that they are doing well. That is wrong. Watch that my message. May the Lord bless you. Let us pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, I release everyone this hour that have negative thinking about heaven and hell. I pray in the name of Jesus, minister to these hearts and every teaching that is not to the glory of God. Father, in the name of Jesus, in your word, Father, start to cleanse this out of this, your son, your daughter, this group, this family, in Jesus' name. I pray, Lord, reveal yourself to these lives. Jesus, reveal yourself to all these souls. Jesus, reveal yourself to as many that you have chosen today. Reveal yourself. Many want to serve you, but they are coming in contact with the false teachers and false preachers. Lord Jesus, start to reveal yourself to these lives and reach to millions of souls out there in Jesus' name. And I pray your children will not be influenced by material things. We will not be influenced by superficial outlook of material things. We will not be influenced by false teachings and false doctrine of, of, of prosperity preaching. We stand to reject them 
name today in Jesus' name. I pray for the spirit of the whole, the conviction of the Holy Spirit. I pray that the spirit of God will lead everyone in this message today. Father, direct your children to your word and be patiently trust to bless the works of the hands of your children. In everything we do for living income, Father, bless the works of our hands. Even as we persevere in you, Holy Spirit, I pray for your visitation in our resources. I pray for your visitation in our Bible reading. I pray for your visitation in us obeying your word in the mighty name of Jesus. And I pray, Father, prepare us that even any time, be it in death, be it in life, Father, we are in you, Jesus. We will make heaven at the long run in Jesus. Almighty name we pray. Amen. Thank you, Holy Spirit. I pray that you reach these lives. Speak life to everyone that hear the sound of my voice today in Jesus' name. Amen. I cover you with the blood of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. God bless you. Have a blessed week and day in Jesus' name. Amen. Bye-bye.